America is the most diverse country on Earth. 312 million people, rich and poor, young and old. Our diversity makes us strong, and we're told it's good for us. Except, apparently, when it comes to big banks. There was a time not long ago when about 15,000 banks held our money. But there were mergers, and the number is now about half that. And more importantly, the biggest banks got even bigger. In some ways, it makes sense. Big banks are faster at transactions and making sure that money is where it needs to be. But James Kwok wrote a book about the recession called 13 Bankers, and he says that there are more powerful factors at work. You know, the motivations for consolidation in any industry are one, ego, and two, people make more money. So in a sense, it's almost an unstoppable force. To get a sense of this force, add up the assets of just the six biggest banks. The total is the equivalent of more than 60% of the country's entire economic output. That's a lot of power. These banks used consumers' money to help inflate the housing bubble, then took taxpayer money in the form of bailouts. Neither event surprises James Kwok. When banks get too big, they have two problems. On the one hand, they're too big to fail, and on the other hand, they're too big to manage, which makes it more likely that they're going to create such a crisis in the first place. In 1816, Thomas Jefferson wrote, I believe that banking establishments are more dangerous than standing armies. Two centuries later, former Fed chairman Alan Greenspan, who oversaw the real estate bubble, had this to say about banks. If they're too big to fail, they're too big. So guess what happened since the recession hit? There are fewer banks. They are bigger. And they'll probably grow even more.